There are some things in baseball where you just have to sit and admire, like a pitcher tossing a perfecto, a batter hitting four homers in one game, or 60 in a season. But what if I told you there was something more unique than all of these feats? Something that has been done since the 1930s, but Freddie Freeman was just one hit away from accomplishing in 2023, and many others have come close. This is the story of MLB's quest for 60, but not the 60 you might be thinking of. Freddie Freeman has become one of the greatest players in this generation and a king of consistency playing in less than 147 games just twice since his first full season back in 2011, and his play has only gotten better with age. Since 2016 he ranks as the leader in hits almost 100 more than second place Mookie Betts, the highest batting average above Jose Altuve and Michael Brantley, as well as what this video is all about. He is a doubles machine with the most during this 8 year span with 310. In fact, since his major league debut on September 1st, 2010, he is by far the doubles king with 473, 60 more than second place Paul Goldschmidt. That's the same difference from second place all the way to 13th place Nick Markakis which just goes to show that doubles have kind of been Freddie's thing. And while the all-time record is still far out of reach as he needs about 300 more to come close to Tris Speaker's all-time record of 792, there is something else he could set out to achieve and that is post MLB's first 60 double season since 1936. Seriously, no one has done it since six guys eclipsed that mark during a 10 year span, all the way back before World War II even started. That's why I was watching Freddie's 2023 campaign under a microscope to see if he could become the seventh. Through May, he was looking good with 23 and 57 games on pace for 65. At the end of August, he had 51 and 133 games on pace for 61, and with his double on September 29th against the San Francisco Giants, he was at 59 with two games to go. But he didn't get it, going 1 for 4 with the single in the penultimate game of the season, and then in the final went 0 for with his final at bat of the season going to shallow left field, where Michael Conforto was able to retire him comfortably. That's how close he was, and he's not alone. Todd Helton was also on the verge of history with 53 two-baggers in 131 games entering the final month of the season, which put him on pace for 64. And with six more doubles before the final seven games of the season, it seemed like he would become the seventh player to join the infamous 60 mark. But he recorded zero doubles in those seven games, only the fifth time he went that long without a double for the entire season, and two of those streaks were in the final month quite literally the worst possible time to go dry as he finished just one shy. He even joked about it after the season stating, I knew I needed one double for 60, but I kept hitting home runs. For reference, he hit four over the last seven games, prompting him to say, maybe on one of those homers, I should have stopped at third so I could finish with 60 doubles. It's ironic how after all, his knack for hitting the ball far caused him to come up short, and as mentioned, there were many more that came close as the league started to see more and more doubles come back around this time. In fact, since 1999, 11 players have managed 55 or more doubles, with the most recent ones being Nicholas Castellanos who managed 58 between the Tigers and Cubs in 2019, and Jose Ramirez had 56 in his breakout 2017 campaign. So now the question must be asked, if so many people have come close then why can't anyone top this mark? And how did players back then do it 6 times in 10 years? Well there are 3 main reasons why. The quick answer is offense was much more prominent back then, averaging closer to 5 runs a game rather than the high 4s we have seen in the past few years, and because homers weren't as big of a factor with an average of a homer every other game compared to today where we're seeing a little over 1. And at the time, players such as Ty Cobb, the greatest of the dead ball era, didn't try to hit for home runs. But with his team limping out the gate with a 4-14 record during the 1925 season, the tale goes he was sitting in the dugout with a reporter and stated, I'll show you something today. I'm going for home runs for the first time in my career. What ensued was one of the greatest offensive displays of his time, going 6 for 6 with 3 homers, a double, and 5 RBIs. Those 3 homers he posted put him as just one of 9 players at the time to hit at least 3 home runs in a single game. Babe Ruth wasn't even on that list. And the next day, he added two more home runs, giving him five over a two game stretch, something that had never been done before. But he went back to his old ways the next day and went on to hit six doubles and eight triples before adding another homer to his season's totals, proving that he could have become a power hitter if he pleased, but that's not how some players like to play the game in the early days. And one of the main reasons why players were trying to hit for doubles rather than homers can be understood if you look at the ballparks the six who eclipsed 60 were hitting in. For starters, the power alleys were on average 10 to 15 feet deeper than today's ballparks, helping keep a few more balls in play. But more importantly, center field was much deeper. Take the Tiger Stadium in the 1930s for example because it held two of the 60 double achievers. 
In 1936, the centerfield wall was a staggering 459 feet away from home plate, whereas nowadays Comerica Park is 47 feet shorter at 412. At the time, walls that far from home weren't uncommon and were helping balls stay in the yard far more frequently. For reference of just how hard it would be to clear a wall that far, take a look at this ball hit by Castellanos back in 2019 when he had 58 doubles. He hit this homer 418 feet, but if he played in the old Tigers ballpark, he would have needed an extra 40 or so feet to clear the wall, meaning it could have been a double. And this ball also left the yard to around the same spot and hit about 20 feet further than the first one, but it still wouldn't have been able to clear the old wall, meaning once again it could have been a double, which would have put him at 60, but that's just the way the game has evolved. Which begs another question, will we see another 60 double season? And if so, when? Well, there are a couple ways to approach this. The first one being, remember when I mentioned there were 11 players since 1999 to hit 55 or more? Well, from 1937 to 1998, only two players reached that mark. Joe Medwick with 56 in 1937, and George Kell also with 56 in 1950. The sheer fact that we're having some players come within 5 and others within 1 or 2 11 times in the past few decades should give all the confidence in the world that it's doable. And each year, there are plenty of guys on pace for it at the beginning of the season. In 2023, Matt Chapman joined Freddie on the quest for 60 through May before falling off massively with an underwhelming finish to his contract year. In 2022, Matt Olsen, Raphael Devers, Freddie Freeman, and Bryce Harper were all on pace through the first 50 or so games of the season, but by game 162, Freeman had the most out of the group, still 13 shy of 60. And finally, Manny Machado, who was actually on pace to break the single season record of 67 back in 2013, managing 38 by the end of June, but fell off a cliff in the second half, managing just one double in all of July, as he finished with 51 for the season. These players are just examples of how many times someone has looked like he get to over 60 in the past few years, and that's encouraging. But on the other hand, you can look at it and say, with home runs so prevalent, it's no wonder 11 players have come close, but none have surpassed the figure. It's up to you. Personally, I believe we will be able to witness someone achieve this milestone in the next 20 years, or maybe 10. And when it does ultimately happen, it will be a historical moment in the league. After all, these are feats that have historically been easier to accomplish. There have been 24 perfect games, most recently by Domingo Herman last season, and the first all the way back in 1880 by Lee Richmond of the Worcester Ruby Legs. There have been 12 three triple games since the expansion era, most recently by Yasiel Puig in 2014 against the San Francisco Giants, with Ernie Banks being the first to do so in 1966 against the Houston Astros. And finally, there have been nine 60 home run seasons, with the first being Babe Ruth in 1927. I'm not saying it's better than hitting 60 home runs in a season, that would easily be discredited, but it would definitely be more unique, and whichever player manages to achieve this next will etch his name in the history book. But until then, we must wait and see. Maybe their magical run will be starting in just a couple short weeks. That wraps it up for this video. Leave a comment regarding who you think is most likely to hit 60 next. And if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like to help the channel reach more like-minded people, as well as subscribing to stay up to date with awesome baseball content just like this one each week. Alright, thank you in advance, and I'll see you in the next one.